Marshall knows stuff. I'm Marshall, and I know stuff. Stick around and I'll show you how to know some of the stuff that I know. I've been getting these requests for uh, little micro videos showing specific things that I do in some of my bigger builds. Uh, like for instance, how to harden and temper steel. So I, uh, I have this idea that I'm going to do a whole series of these little quickies. Uh, easy for you, easy for me, and uh, just show you some little things that I do uh, in some of my builds and then that way you don't have to watch a whole knife tutorial to find out how to do something specific like harden your steel. So today's episode of Marshall Knows Stuff, we're going to be learning how to harden and temper our blades. The first thing that I'm going to do is preheat the oven because by the time that I have my blade up to critical temperature in the forge, the oven will barely be preheated. It takes a lot of time to preheat the whole thing. So I'm going to set my oven to 500 degrees and let it preheat. Five oh five. All right, let's go kick on the forge. Okay, today's victim is going to be the M Tuck. While I did make a cool blade out of uh, 1080 steel, until it gets treated, it's junk. I uh, tried sharpening it, just didn't keep its edge because it's so soft still. It uh, definitely needs to be treated, so I'm going to throw this one, this completed project, almost completed project, into the forge, and this is the one that we're going to be uh, heat treating today. With the paracord wrap off of it, uh, it's ready to go into the forge. You just set it in there for just a couple minutes, wait for it to get up to critical temperature, and uh, I'll show you how to tell that it's at critical temperature. Okay, like I've said before, and uh, there's debate on whether or not this is effective, but I use motor oil to quench my steel because it's just in large supply for me. I have a ton of cars that I'm changing oil on constantly, so I always have a ton of motor oil around. You can use ice water. Ice water uh, is a lot colder than motor, motor oil, and it'll quench it a lot faster. That makes it a lot harder. But the slightly slower cooling of it uh, combined with the tempering of the of the steel will make it a more durable blade. That's why I like to use motor oil. Aside from the convenience of always having it around, I just uh, use it because uh, it's making it more durable also. Okay, now in my pocket I've got my little garage ma magnet. If you're at critical temperature, the magnet will not stick to your steel. I'm not to critical temperature yet, my magnet's sticking to my steel. So you want to keep checking it, uh, take it out of the fire, and you can tell by the color too. It'll be almost welding temperature by the time that it's at critical temperature. So if it's uh, real bright, bright orange, uh, like into yellow and almost white, then you're at critical temperature. You can tell by the color if you do it enough, you get to recognize the color, but until then, use a magnet to be able to tell. That's almost critical right there. I'm gonna leave it in for just a bit longer. That thing's ready to go. Not sticking. Let's do it. So I'm going to dip it in the oil and then swish it around. That quenches it. 
It's uh, what's happening is you're locking in all of these uh, molecules. You're snapping them together real fast, and that's what makes it hard. When you heat it up, they all expand, and then you cool it down quickly, and then they lock in, and they lock those molecules in to the structure. Now, a lot of people say they like to use uh, motor oil because they say it adds carbon to the steel, and uh, that's just simply not true. It, uh, it does add some of that carbon to the outside, but uh, as soon as you're done tempering, you're going to see all that get brushed off anyway. It's, uh, it does possibly add carbon to the very outer layer, but that goes away almost instantly. The only way to really add carbon into your steel is by molting, by making molten the whole piece of steel with carbon in there. Like if you were going to uh, bake it with some charcoal in there, that charcoal would get some carbon into there and that would be a way to get carbon into your steel, but not by just dunking it in motor oil. But that's ready to go now. Turn off the forge and uh, we're gonna clean it up and then put it into our preheated oven. Okay, that whole process only took about 10 minutes to uh, get this up to critical temperature and then uh, quench it. The next part takes a lot longer. Our preheated oven, uh, it needs to sit in there for about two hours. I clean the whole thing up so I can tell what temperature I'm at because when you have that nice polished silver on there, you'll notice that it changes colors and I usually go for that cobalt blue. Whenever I hit cobalt blue on the outside, I know that the whole thing is to a certain temperature uh, all the way through and that's when the blade gets tempered. So I'm gonna clean this up with uh, a little sanding wheel and then uh, once it's all polished up, then we're gonna throw it in the oven. Okay, the m tuck is all hardened and a great way to be able to tell whether it's hardened is by simply taking a file and rubbing it across your steel. If it skates, then that means that it's hard enough because this file is very hard steel and when your blade is also that hard, then it's not going to dig into it, it's just gonna skate over it like that. It's a good way to prove it. So, I'm all polished up on it, semi-polished, and uh, I'm ready to throw this into the oven. Just throw it on the cookie sheet and we're gonna leave it in there for two hours. I'll check it periodically to make sure that uh, I'm not already to that temperature. Like I said, I like it to be cobalt blue. Set the timer and now we wait. Now the reason it's important to temper is because whenever you harden, the steel is so hard that it's brittle. If you uh, throw, say a file, at concrete, it'll break, it'll just snap. When you temper it, uh, you get it to that hardness level and then you bring it back down. You start to expand it a little bit to where it's hard, but it's not brittle. You're keeping your knife from being brittle. And uh, that's the little window of hardness that you want your knife in. You want it hardened, but you also want it so, uh, soft enough that it's not gonna break. And that's why you temper. Okay, 30 minutes in. We're starting to change colors a little bit, but it's not the uh, color that I want it. Like I said, I'm going to keep checking on it periodically to make sure that it's uh, not where I want it to be. More of the waiting game. About 25 minutes left and we're hitting that cobalt blue color. Uh, it could probably stand to come out now but I'm gonna leave it in there for that additional 25 minutes just so I know that it's uh, got that same temperature all the way to the center. <gasps> the cookies are done. And there we go, cookies. Yep, that guy looks just right. Two hours was still a good amount of time. 
So now we're ready to uh, polish it up and then uh, maybe another video I'll show you how to paracord wrap the handle. Oh, one more thing. After you're done tempering it, don't bother quenching this again. You want to just set it out at room temperature and let it cool on its own. It's going to need to cool nice and slow. Well, there you go. Hardened and tempered. All this guy needs now is a uh, polish, an edge, and a handle. But I'll save that for another Marshall Nose stuff. Remember, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and let's keep knowing some stuff.